We live in a world that's full of wonders. There are beautiful sights to see in every town, city, and country in the world, but not all of them get the attention they deserve. We'd like to do something about that in this video. Everyone knows where the world's best known wonders are hiding, but we know of some spectacular sights that you might have missed. You won't miss out on them any longer because we're going to tell you all about them. The British Isles are full of ancient castles, and there's no prettier castle in Wales than Carnarfon Castle. In October 2016, it became even more attractive than usual when it was covered in thousands of ceramic poppies as part of a display intended to honor the victims of the First World War. The poppies are collectively known as the Weeping Window installation, which was first placed on display at the Tower of London in England 2014 to mark 100 years since the beginning of the war. Since then, it's been moved to other locations, but might never have looked as spectacular as it does at Carnarfon Castle. There could hardly be a more appropriate place to put it. The castle is also home to the Royal Welsh Fusiliers Museum. The battalion saw extensive action during the war, including the notorious Battle of the Somme in 1916. You'll find poppies all over the castle and its grounds, but the most striking part of the whole display is a cascade of the red flowers that emerges from the top of the tallest tower and flows all the way to the ground. While we don't want to worry anybody, our next amazing sight is a slightly alarming one. There appears to be a gigantic circular structure at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean, and it's moving. The unknown structure has been detected at a depth of 3,000 feet below sea level and is around two and a half miles long. It was first identified in 2017, and it's yet to be identified. The structure appears to be human-made, as opposed to natural, and has left tracks in its wake, running for more than 40 miles and leading to the coast of California. That would suggest that the object has American origins, but surely someone would have noticed a two-mile-long object slowly crawling into the sea in California a few years ago. Some scientists have suggested that what we're looking at here might be nothing more than tectonic fissures and the pathway of an underwater current, but that doesn't appear to be likely. Tectonic fissures can make strange patterns but wouldn't explain the circular object. This is a mystery that remains unresolved. Is Lake Kandy in Sadi, Kazakhstan the most beautiful lake in the world? A lot of people think so, and looking at these pictures, it's easy to see why. The way the trees jut out of the perfectly turquoise water and reflect upon its surface creates an optical illusion of an underwater forest, almost like seeing a CGI special effect in real life. What makes this location even more amazing is the fact that it didn't exist at all until 1911. An earthquake that struck the region in that year caused a landslide, which in turn created a natural dam. Rainwater then flooded the valley over the next few years, and the lake was born. Normally, the trees that stood in the valley would rot and decompose in the event of such a disaster, but the spruce trees in Lake Kandy remain standing, creating an incredible spectacle in the water. Even though there are over one million people living nearby in the city of Almaty, the lake has a pleasant, tranquil atmosphere that enchants everybody who visits it. It's one of the lesser-known lakes in the region, overshadowed by Kolse Lake and Bolshu Almatinsko Lake in terms of visitors but it's by far the most visually impressive. We're all familiar with the concept of Transformer robots thanks to the toys and the movies that star Megan Fox, but none of us expected to see a giant Transformer in real life. That's why it was such a shock to the residents of Donetsk, Ukraine, when one turned up there seemingly overnight in October 2020, close to the Mayak markets. The whole sculpture is made from scrap metal and was put together by a dedicated team of volunteers. They describe their creation as an Autobot, but some observers say it looks more like a Titan from the Titanfall video games, or perhaps one of the exoskeleton robots from the Avatar movie. Some of the locals felt like the money spent on building it might have been better used on improving facilities in the region, but you'll always get complaints of that nature when you create art. Nobody knows how long the Donetsk Autobot will stand guard here, but it's to be hoped that it doesn't turn out to be a Decepticon. You might be aware that tulips come from the Netherlands, but there might be no tulip as beautiful 
as the field it was grown in. Every March, the fields close to Amsterdam become rows of multicolored stripes as the tulips bloom, with vivid shades of red, yellow, purple, pink, green, and many colors in between. The carefully planted displays last for a full month before the farmers harvest the tulips for sale. The annual tulip display took on special significance during the difficulties of 2020, as farmers cleverly planted messages of hope and support in their fields, which only became visible when the tulips bloomed and they could be read from above. Pictures of the improvised displays went viral all over the world and attracted a lot of support for the farmers who created them. It seems almost a shame that the tulips have to be cut down and taken away when they create such beautiful scenery, but they can't be grown all year round and would only wither and die if they were left in place. There's always sadness when they're cut, but they return the following year looking better than ever. We'd be amazed if you'd never heard of the Great Wall of China. It's one of the most famous human-made structures on the planet and can even be seen from space. Almost every picture you've ever seen of it is taken in and around the tourist-friendly area of Beijing, though, which isn't an accurate reflection of a wall that runs on for more than 13,000 miles. Most people have never seen the very end of the wall where it meets the sea. It's in Shanghai Guan, and this is what it looks like. While the whole wall was originally a defensive fortification, these days it's a tourist trap. Entertainment available at the Shanghai Guan site includes camel rides along the wall, a dancing horse show, and the option to ride along the wall on a tricycle. The very end of the wall is known as the Old Dragon Head and extends out into the sea in order to prevent anyone from crossing the wall purely by walking around it. Much of what exists here now is a restoration rather than the original wall but there's still enough of it left to get a sense of what it once looked like. When you think of palm trees, you'll probably imagine them on the sides of beaches somewhere exotic. We suspect that most people wouldn't think about Colombia as a hotspot for palm trees, but then most people wouldn't imagine palm trees to be as tall as they are in Colombia either. These are the wax palms of Cocora Valley in Salento, Colombia, and they're the tallest palm trees in the world. They're so enormous that they almost look comical, like skinny fingers pointing up at the sky. The tallest of them stands just over 200 feet high. Trees like this could only grow in high altitude environments, which makes the Kokora Valley perfect for them. Even at its lowest point, it's still 5,900 feet above sea level. The wax palms were briefly considered endangered after the candle making industry harvested too many of them at once to make candles from their trunks but the government responded by declaring it to be the National Tree of Colombia and awarding the species protected status. They've staged a recovery in recent years and will hopefully continue standing for many generations to come. You don't have to know much about the American state of Alaska to know that it's extremely cold. The conditions can make living there a little difficult, but they also make incredible creations like the Mendenhall Ice Caves in Juneau possible. The caves are part of the 12-mile-long Mendenhall Glacier and can only be accessed by taking a kayak across a lake and then climbing over the edge of the glacier. Your reward for undertaking that difficult journey is the astonishing sight of running water flowing over rocks beneath the bright blue ceilings of a hollow, frozen glacier. It's probably as close as you'll ever get to the feeling of being stood on an alien planet. Unfortunately, the caves won't survive much longer. The glacier has receded two miles since 1958, and during the warmest months of the year, the caves no longer exist at all. They melt away and reform when the temperature drops. If you want to see them, we suggest you take a guided tour, as that will ensure you only visit the parts of the cave that aren't likely to collapse as you're walking through them. It's highly unlikely that you'll have heard of the hypnotic turtle dream box unless you're a relative of Broomfield in Colorado, USA. In which case, you're missing out. It would be easy to walk straight past it without realizing it was there. But look a little closer, and you'll see that it's a miniature rotating drive-by gallery showcasing the latest and greatest works of the area's artists. This used to be an old-fashioned lending library, but it was converted in 2019 to become a community art project. It's thought to be the smallest fully functional art gallery in the world. As of the beginning of 2021, the display within the Dreambox is entitled Science Fiction and features a range of works in clay and paint 
accompanied by a specially engineered soundscape that can be heard by tuning in on your phone or car radio. Arlo White, who came up with the concept of the gallery, hopes that it will showcase at least three different collections every year. It's certainly one of the more innovative attempts to bring art out of galleries and closer to communities. If we were to tell you that there's a place in Mexico known as the Cave of Swords, you might suspect that it was either the site of a great battle or the tomb of a warrior. In reality, it's the place where you'll find some of the largest and most spectacular crystals in the world. The cave was found in the Penelos Mining Company in Nica in 1910 and gave the 240-foot-long cave its name because the giant crisscrossing gypsum crystals they discovered there looked like sword blades. Even the smallest of the crystals are 6 feet long, and the largest reach 36 feet. It's thought that the crystals were formed millions of years ago after volcanic activity flooded the mountain that hosts the cave with andrite. As the andrite dissolved in the cave's waters, it enriched the water's existing mineral content and allowed the crystals to form. All of the crystals are still growing and will reach even larger sizes in the years to come. Unfortunately, visiting the cave is prohibited for anyone other than scientists. Humidity inside the cave is 90%, giving it an effective temperature of 228 degrees Fahrenheit and making it impossible for anyone to spend more than 45 minutes inside it even when wearing a protective suit. It's a lot safer to appreciate it by looking at these images. There's a lake in Senegal that's said to look exactly like pink lemonade. We wouldn't recommend trying to drink its waters, though. You might find that it's more than a little salty. This is Lake Retba in Rufisk, Senegal, known throughout the region for its distinctive reddish-pink color. You might have seen it on television if you're a sports fan, as the white beach next to it is the finishing point of the Dakar Rally. The beach isn't made of sand, though. It's made of salt, and the salt content of the water is even higher than that of the Dead Sea. It's easy for people to float in it, but those who dip into it regularly to collect salt have to cover themselves in shea butter to avoid the abrasive effects of the salinity damaging their skin. The red shade only lasts as long as the dry season, which runs from November to June every year. Outside of those times, the salt in the water is diluted by rainfall, which ruins the effect and gives the lake a more conventional hue. You probably wouldn't want to swim in this lake, but it's a beautiful thing to look at as long as you catch it at the right time of the year. Out in the middle of the Atacama Desert in Chile, there's a giant human hand reaching out of the sand as if a giant were trying to claw his way out from beneath the ground. It's one of the very few roadside features you'll see when you drive down this stretch of the Pan American Highway, and it's probably quite a surprise to see if you don't know it's coming. The 35-foot-high sculpture is around 46 miles south of Antofagasta, which is the closest settlement. It's called Mano de Desierto, which translates into English as Hand of the Desert, and was created by Chilean artist Mario Irazabal during the early 1980s. That means it's almost 40 years old, and yet the arid conditions of the desert have preserved it so well that it looks as if it could have been finished yesterday. You can even still see the wrinkles on each knuckle and the cuticles on the fingernails. Barring accidents, it should still be around and look just as good another 40 years from now. Hands are a recurring theme in Irizabal's work, although none are quite as striking as this one. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!